Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and sharing what we do at NEN with all of you. Hello. Uh, here to talk about uh, incubation and incubators and how to run successful incubators. And what we do, as Professor Patak was mentioning, is not directly incubation. Uh, but our sense is that uh, it's very related to this whole process of you know incubating an entrepreneur. And we're really talking about generally promoting entrepreneurship. Uh, we came into being a few years ago, about, about six years to be precise, and the reason being that when we looked around the country, we saw you know, sporadic incidences of promotions of, you know, promotion of entrepreneurship and also incubation around the country. IIT Bombay probably at that, even at that time was a pioneer and, uh, you know, the most successful uh, both in entrepreneurship and uh, incubation. But when we looked around, what we observed was that in many places, incubation was happening in isolation of entrepreneurship. So there was no ecosystem, no ambience for entrepreneurship either on campus or even in that particular locality. But you had an incubator that was sitting at an institution or elsewhere. And you know, when, we, when we looked at it more closely, it wasn't necessarily the most successful uh, you know, of, of incubators. And uh, you know, generally, our observation on entrepreneurship education also was that, again, entrepreneurship education was looked at as, as, as an isolated, again, activity. It was almost like, OK, if I have any interest in promoting entrepreneurship, what I would do is run a series of workshops packed into a couple of days, you know, during the year, and expect that my student would go from never having thought of entrepreneurship to actually becoming inspired, educated, and perhaps take the plunge immediately after, which was very unrealistic again. So these observations actually led us to start the National Entrepreneurship Network, where we said that we need to promote entrepreneurship in a much more systematic and integrated kind of a manner with academic institutions. Because our young people are all sitting on, on, on your campuses, and they often come from families where there is no history of entrepreneurship. They also come from environments where they don't necessarily get exposed to entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship directly. You know, and in an environment like that, I mean, uh, if we expect that some of them will start companies either immediately after they've passed out or in the near future, it's somewhat, you know, difficult to envisage that. And even when they do, because some of them are naturally more ambitious, more inspired, you know, the chances of failure are much higher than they would otherwise be. You know, entrepreneurship generally does mean high chances of failure, but, you know, they, they actually multiply a lot more if, if people are not prepared. So our mission is to democratize opportunity. It's a very broad mission if you, if you look at it. And what we felt was that you know, opportunities should exist not just with people who come either from, from business backgrounds or people who are in much more advanced uh, you know, environments where they get the exposure and the learning for entrepreneurship. But it should, it should percolate down to all individuals you know, across, across the nation. And that, those opportunities should become available, not by virtue of somebody kind of you know, providing it to them on a platform, but by virtue of them being able to seek it you know, because they have the knowledge and the skills. Uh, this, of course, you know, therefore goes hand in hand, the high growth entrepreneurs and you know, the jobs. Mind you, we did not want to set up something that would promote just more you know, single shops or or panwalas. That was not our objective. We were not looking at this as an answer to unemployment in India directly. We were looking to inspire some of our best young people to do more than what they were doing, which is just seeking jobs, and looking at them as starting high growth companies. So this is what NEN is. It's a network of academic institutions, currently 370 plus institutions across the country. And they're of all kinds, management, engineering, general arts, science, commerce, hotel management, you know, even design and law in some cases. It's also a network of emerging and new entrepreneurs. And we particularly you know, use the word new entrepreneurs because we have other organizations, associations in this country who are focused on the established entrepreneur, entrepreneurs pool. Uh, when we say emerging, it's basically people who think they may be entrepreneurs at some time, but they're not necessarily going to be doing it in the next four months or six months. Okay? It's people who are looking at it as a four-year goal or a five-year kind of a goal. And you have them everywhere. You have them as students on campuses. You have them as professionals. And of course, startups are just immediate startups. 
and of course resource people. Entrepreneurship is not, cannot be promoted without bringing in established entrepreneurs into the classroom or uh, onto platforms where they can engage with these people. So established entrepreneurs and professionals who are knowledgeable about new business development are all part of the, of the resource pool. What we do is facilitate knowledge, so it's knowledge sharing, and we also more specifically help develop skills in entrepreneurship. It could be, and, and skills are varied. I mean, it obviously starts with the whole process of you know, inspiring and, and having them understand attitudes and traits that are required for the entrepreneurs to succeed. But it goes beyond that. What we highlight to them is also that there are hard business skills that are required if you really want to succeed. And those actually start even from, even from the very early stage of ideation or being more creative or looking out into the marketplace and understanding where the needs are emerging and therefore what opportunities are more likely to, to make sense today and tomorrow. So it starts from there and it goes beyond that. You know, the necessary requirement of being able to, you know, differentiate between ideas and opportunities and being able to use, you know, questions, frameworks, established frameworks, you know, that can actually allow you to even evaluate your own ideas. Because young people, I don't know what your experience has been, but my and our experience across NEN has been that young people will come up to you. If they think you know anything about entrepreneurship, they'll come up to you and they'll share their ideas with you and expect you to tell them whether or not they make sense, right? And what we're telling them is that there is a generic level of evaluation that you are able to do yourself and you should be able to do yourself because you will keep getting ideas, right? And, and an idea today will be dead tomorrow. So therefore that evaluation, self-evaluation is required. Of course, there's always the need to vet it by experts, but the ultimate call on whether or not this makes sense rests with you because there's also the personal context of who the person is, and therefore does it make sense for him or not, him or her or not. Uh, we also help facilitate uh, the growth of new startups, and we have you know, different initiatives. We facilitate people coming into the incubation, uh, some, of the, some of the best incubators around the country. Uh, we facilitate people being able to reach out to angel fund funders, you know, so that they can uh, have access to some uh, early stage funding. And of course, there is the collective sharing of knowledge. Our experts, people who have already entrepreneurs, are always sharing what they've learned through the forums that we've created and also through our online uh, uh, you know, platform. Uh, we look at our support in two different ways. There's institutional support. That's where we started. When we started five years ago, we started with just institutional support. And that goes directly to faculty, to students who are aspiring entrepreneurs, and to the entrepreneurship club managers. ECEL, if uh, those of who, who, you know, you were aware of what was happening at IIT Bombay, ECEL is the entrepreneurship club that is run by students here. And the term ECEL became very popular in the past few years, and it's now a generic term that you use for entrepreneurship clubs anywhere. So we help start uh, entrepreneurship clubs on campuses. These are entirely run by students and they're, they're extremely popular and do a great deal to create a general ambience for entrepreneurship on campuses. Uh, for individual support, you know, we, we basically cater to the stakeholders, of working professional students, who we call as emerging entrepreneurs and real students. And I'll tell you very quickly what that support is. Faculty benefits. What we, our approach is not to go in and run programs on any campus, because we don't believe we're going to have any impact if we, if we try doing that. What we do instead is to help build capacity for entrepreneurship on these campuses. And of course, when you talk of capacity building, Professor Patak was just talking about enhancing knowledge of the faculty members if you want good education, right? And you're, that's, you're talking about that in technical uh, areas. And entrepreneurship is so far removed currently from your lives. That's my, that's my perception, having you know, met with so many institutions, that unless there is real you know, solid learning, for the faculty member himself or herself in that area, it's very difficult for them to communicate that to the students. And so we focus on faculty education. We run an entrepreneurship educators course with Stanford and with IIM Bangalore here in India. And currently over 250 uh, faculty members are either enrolled or have you know, just completed their, uh, their course. It's a foundation course and it covers everything from content to pedagogy and different ways of evaluation for students on campus. It's not expected that every one of these faculty members will go in and run courses, mind you. Because entrepreneurship, our uh, belief is that there's a variety of programs that make sense. And often it's a combination of activities, 
events, experiential learning uh, platforms, etc., and not just courses. Courses happen a lot later. Okay. Uh, there is consulting help. Uh, we have a complete team of consultants. You know, about 16 of them across the country who work in different cities, who actually work on the ground with the faculty members to help them to conceptualize, you know, plan, and also implement programs on campuses. And this is an ongoing activity through the year for for these consultants and these faculty members. None of these faculty are standalone faculty in entrepreneurship again, mind you. You know, they are, they have their own core areas of teaching and they just believe that entrepreneurship can, can add another dimension to the students lives. And so therefore, and of course they have their own personal, you know, interest um, in mind and therefore they take this on, okay. Learning tools, apart from faculty education, there's the need for content. So that's also something that we package. Uh, when we say we develop learning tools, we're not necessarily just creating them ourselves. We do some of that ourselves, but we also identify different pockets of, you know, very high quality learning tools from across the country and also outside the country. And then we package that for use in India, con contextualizing it to India and also add all the teaching guidelines and other things that make it easy for you to take it up, okay? Again, as you can see, it's everything from courses to exercises, videos, caselets and case studies interviews with entrepreneurs, different articles and different pieces of content. And then the, the one thing that we believe works really well at, at NEN is the peer community, you know, because there's a lot of sharing that happens through this and it's at different levels. At faculty levels, we have both regional as well as national level, you know, communities and that happens also at the student level and the entrepreneurs uh, level too, okay. To give you a sense of the numbers here, uh, we currently have about 700 odd faculty in entrepreneurship across the country. Uh, this is spread across the country, you know, 15 or 16 major cities and uh, several other smaller cities around those. Uh, about 55,000 young students are part of the very engaged group of young people on these campuses who are participating in entrepreneurship uh, programs either with the view of being an entrepreneurial leader and being more successful or themselves starting companies. In addition to that, about 1,500 or so entrepreneurs, established entrepreneurs from around the country and again a combination of local and national, regional, national are spending time on these campuses. So that's really, you know, what we are trying to facilitate. Yeah, yeah I'm Manohar Pai from Manipal. My question is, this NEN uh, Stanford IMB entrepreneur, yeah. what is the content actually covered it, in that? Okay, so it deals with, we. it's a foundation course, so it deals with all the basics of entrepreneurship. What do you really teach? You know, it going right from, again, the entrepreneurial traits and how you bring that to the students, uh, you know, the students and how you have them develop those to actually real concepts that you can communicate. Everything from ideation, to you know, evaluation, to business planning, okay? And then going further and dealing with you know, even things like team building, negotiation, you know, finance, entrepreneurial finance, managing that, raising money. It's all of those different aspects that, that you would end up having to deal with if your students became interested in entrepreneurship. So that's on the content side. There are also pedagogical approaches. There are different ways to teach. It's not just through a course. In fact, sometimes the course can be the least effective one. Right. So we look at different ways to teach that, a lot of experiential methodologies including you know, simulation games, caselets, you know, interviewing an entrepreneur directly live in class, you know, using a video in the classroom to facilitate discussions, sending them out into the, into the marketplace you know, where they can go and interview and meet with entrepreneurs or, or even understand how people sell and buy and, and, and those kind of things. So there's experiential, there's also the more traditional case methodology you know, that we kind of uh, focus on, okay? And then workshops and other things that... Uh, is it kind of certification course? It is a certification course, but certification is not tied to participation. Certification is, again, Professor Pata was mentioning, I, uh, was mentioning that there is a need for people to implement, and we are very focused on that. Entrepreneurship is not about just taking a certificate course and, you know, uh, walking away with it. We have tied certification directly to the impact that you achieve on campus. So you go back, you try stuff out, we, we, we see what kind of programs you're developing, we see what kind of participation, because again, this is voluntary for students. 
they it's not generally these are not compulsory programs so we see what kind of participation there is you know from the student community we take feedback our consultants are there to judge you know the quality and certification happens post that it's uh, you know in all it's uh, 12 days during the year but it's broken up into five workshop modules and we are currently in the process of uh, revamping and reorganizing it into two different courses where you know because now we have a lot of people who are who are you who've covered they're ready for more advanced so we're organizing that into into two different courses uh, right now okay. it is available for uh, faculty from any and member institutions so it's a direct value add that we provide for any any institution that's working with us pardon me which, which period of the year it is again it's spread through the year but we try and make it convenient so you know in june you have something in january you have something again in march and october so that's typically so it's january march october and uh, sorry june and then october so that's that's really how it breaks up and we run two currently we're running two different batches faculty members come from stanford from uh, columbia and from london business school you know, along with some Indian faculty, that's the combination of uh, resource people. So we actually go both by their availability as well as by, you know, generally the exam and other timings for faculty in India. Yeah. You know, so far there hadn't been because we were trying to actually just inspire enough people to come in. But now that we have a huge demand, as I was telling you, there's 700 odd faculty who are in the wait list to go through this uh, course and we are putting in uh, almost like a self evaluation you know kind of a kind of a test online test so that you can come in understand where you, what your level is currently and then decide you know whether the foundation courses is, is better for you or the advanced course so in that sense there is a selection so the benefits for students it's obviously there uh, there are a bouquet of programs that happen on every single member campus that we have so therefore there's a huge opportunity to build their knowledge in entrepreneurship and also skills in entrepreneurship uh, apart from that they can directly access expert um, advice from the NEN help desk which we run directly you know via our portal NEN online.org uh, we also run mentoring sessions for the prepared students you know those students who have very strong ideas or business plans and they want to kind of start uh, start companies we run mentoring sessions for them uh, there is obviously the NEN community you know on our portal again there are blogs and other things where people have the freedom to ask questions and, and a lot of them get answered that way too uh, there is a newsletter that we send out and of course you know getting students particularly those who are engaging very regularly they do get NEN certification uh, we invite again you know, on the basis of their participation levels, people to a national summit that, uh, that, that we have started, uh, you know, it's called the Entrepreneurship Leadership Summit. And uh, through our association with DARE, India's first entrepreneurship magazine, we've got a discounted subscription for uh, all student members of, uh, of NEN. So these are just generally some things that will attract, you know, your students if they want to be part of this. Additionally, because we run entrepreneurship clubs, we uh, we create additional opportunities for the leaders of the entrepreneurship class because these are all these are already with what we've seen they're very entrepreneurial these are already you know the future entrepreneurs of the country so we run additional workshops for them to uh, enhance their leadership skills and we create extra opportunities for them to network with entrepreneurs directly okay so that's additional for them of course we recognize them you can see here we run an annual uh, you know large scale event uh, at the end of the entrepreneurship week that we celebrate every year it's entrepreneurship week is a national movement that we've started in order to just create more awareness around entrepreneurship there's you know we don't have any other agenda except to create more awareness and of course the student community rallies around it but there's also you know the corporate community that we that we you know engage and also people at home you parents of, of, of students who are wanting to start entrepreneurs. I particularly remember a story that, you know, that we had heard here at IIT Bombay where when one of the young teams was starting a company, the parents came to actually sit down with the faculty and literally complain, who's going to marry my son? 
you know, if he's going to be an entrepreneur, not only is he not taking up a good job, but he's also now got debt because he's raised money. So that's the, that's the perception generally. So we're trying to also, you know, beat that perception down and create more, you know, awareness and, and a positive awareness for entrepreneurship. For the emerging entrepreneurs, obviously there is, you know, we, we actually look at more practical kind of knowledge. If, for those of you who've ever looked at any and online, uh, the knowledge base there, the content there is more around practical things like raising money, what are the different sources that you can approach. You know, um, if, you're looking, if you're dealing with X, Y, Z kind of uh, issues with your team, how do you resolve them? If you want to stay innovative, what do you really do? So very, very practical stuff that will be relevant for people who are actually either thinking very concretely of starting out or actually running a startup. Okay, and of course the mentoring and the help desk continue to cater to this group. You know, we also create other kind of events and networking opportunities for this group, which is different from the ones that we run for students because it's a, their, their learning is at a different level and their needs are very different. Uh, for startups, there is, as I said, a fast track to incubators. We are now associated with six, uh, about six or seven incubators around the country and there is a direct application channel. Of course, the criteria for each incubator remains their own criteria, but you know, people have the ability to find these incubators and, and apply to them. Uh, there is also a track to investment. As I said, angel funding. Uh, we've got an association with the Indian Angels Network and people can apply directly via the Indian portal. Uh, but of course, the decision rests again entirely with the Indian Angel uh, Network on what they want to do with it. Uh, young entrepreneurs get profiled on any and online and it's a huge opportunity for them to get exposure. We have found that people who we have profiled have gone on to benefit in many different ways. You know, they've been able to find other opportunities for media publicity as well as, you know, uh, some of them have even said they've got more uh, customers and they've got, you know, people inquiring for uh, uh, joining those startups and so on and so forth. Uh, this year, we are launching any and coolest startups, which is an award to identify the best startups in the country. Uh, we are just launching it on July 1, so you're probably the first crowd outside of NEN uh, to hear of it. This is entirely in the public domain. It's very open source. We would look for people to nominate. We'll look for people to vote for and, and kind of pick the best uh, startups. Of course, there'll always al uh, also be an expert panel that will constantly review each of the startups that get, uh, that get nominated. But please do look up this this particular thing and we hope that all of you will be able to nominate some startups from your local communities. Okay. We're also launching what we call any startup jobs. Again, this is a platform to create new opportunities for startups to, to get high quality talent. I mean, all of you, I'm sure, you know, your institutions are talking about the largest companies that your students join, right? Uh, we are trying to create a cool factor around being in a startup. You know, because it is truly, it's, it's amazing, you know, what one can do in a startup. But the awareness is not there with the students. So we're creating that platform where students who are ready to be entrepreneurs can get that opportunity to work with startups and vice versa. Okay. Again, this is a new program. We're launching it literally on June 19th at Triple IT Bangalore, uh, you know, for the first time. Uh, any and online, we'll, I'll just, you know, show you some clips and uh, then I'm done. All of the things that I was talking about, this is the page where we kind of do the startup profiles. You can see some, a little bit of the format that we have. The events, you can see the business incubator program is up there right now. And there are several other programs uh, that you can, you know, kind of get information on. This is from around the country. Uh, this is the Indian community and the kind of things you can find, different institutions, different e-cells. You know, you can communicate with them directly. Yeah, so if you're looking to reach the entrepreneurial community, this is one easy way for you to do that. Uh, and if, and the, the, this is where we bring in the expert, uh, you know, comments and talks. This is a complete uh, set of interviews with, with some of the most creative people uh, around creativity. And there are different topics that we cover this way. Uh, these are some of the experts who've been answering questions and queries from entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs on any and online. And there's a, there's a complete you know, there's a long pool of people. These are some of the tools for entrepreneurs that, again, this is coming in, you know, a lot of, a lot of sharing is happening. You know, people who have information are actually sharing what they know through the blogs. And a lot of it is very relevant for the, for the current community. 
Uh, this is again, this is what we call our knowledge bank. Uh, we've tackled different uh, topics there, angel investing, VC funds, business planning and things like that. So there's a variety of you know, ways in which we are promoting um, uh, you know, knowledge and sharing and access to knowledge uh, through any and online. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, there are teaching tools and other things that are also available for faculty members as they, as they go around running programs. So from my end, thank you very much. And again, it's a pleasure being here.